today I'm going to teach on a very important subject and that's a Passover. Um, we really need to, to understand what the Passover is and how it relates to our Savior, Yeshua. Now for some of you, this may challenge your church doctrine and for others of you, um, it's just going to confirm what Holy Spirit has already revealed to you. So I'm going to systematically go through um, the Passover through scriptures. Now I will not be reading all of the scriptures. Some of them I will just be giving you scripture addresses. So if you want a copy of this entire teaching, um, which would include all the scriptures written out, um, you can email me and request it and I will send it to you um, in a Word document. And I will include uh, my email address um, at the bottom um, of the uh, video in the um, word section. So in the Old Testament, the, the scriptures for the Feast of Passover, and I'm just going to give you the scripture addresses, they occur in Exodus 12, uh, verses 1 to 30, Leviticus 23, 4 to 5, Numbers 33, 3, and Deuteronomy 16, 1 to 8. And I'm going to share with you now the story in brief um, what uh, the Passover was. Um, and I want to begin uh, in the Bible where Moses was called by Yahweh to go back into Egypt uh, to get the people set free and to get them out of the bondage of Egypt. And the Pharaoh's heart, it says in scripture, was hardened and he wouldn't let the people go. And as a result, Yahweh um, caused uh, 10 plagues to come upon uh, the nation of Egypt until finally Pharaoh let uh, all of the um, Israelites go go. But I want to focus on the 10th plague because it's the 10th plague um, is, is the result of, of why the Passover actually was established and it's through that story. So when the Israelites were in bondage in the land of Egypt, Yahweh gave Moses very specific instructions as to how he was going to get the people uh, to leave the land of Egypt. Uh, so number one, he instructed Moses and said that the head of each household was to take a lamb of the first year, it says in scripture, and they were to take that lamb on the 10th day of the first month, and they were to set it aside until the 14th day. Now that's important. On the evening of the 14th day, the lamb was to be killed. Um, and the blood was to be sprinkled on the doorpost and the lintel of their dwelling places. Number three, they were to eat the roasted lamb with bitter herbs and unleavened bread. Uh, they were to kill the lamb in haste and be ready to leave Egypt at the midnight hour, it says. Now at midnight, uh, scripture says that the death angel passed over the land and every house that did not have the blood over the lintel and the doorpost, um, uh, everyone in that household, the, the firstborn, was killed. And that occurred all over the land of Egypt. Uh, and that, that, that every firstborn of, of the humans and of the animals uh, were killed by the death angel. Um, so the feast, of Pas Pas <clears throat> the feast of Passover originated when the death angel passed over the home sprinkled with the blood. So the Hebrew word for Passover is Pesach, which means the passing over. Hence, that's, that's the name of what they celebrate even today. It's they're remembering how the death angel passed over um, the Israelites when they were in Egypt. The Lord told them that they were to celebrate this feast every year to remind the children of Israel um, how Yahweh delivered them from the bondage of, of, of Egypt. So, uh, number one, uh, the Passover was the, uh, the beginning of their new month, okay? So, the, the, the feast of Passover, um, the, their new month became Nisan, which then become the, became their first month, but originally Nisan was the seventh month. Um, so the Feast of Passover marked a brand new beginning for the Israelites. Now, how is that fulfilled through Christ in the church? Receiving Christ is the beginning of our new birth 
uh, and the new covenant. And so the day we uh, become born again, we get a new life, it says in scripture, and in essence, um, we get a, a new birthday and a brand new calendar, it's a new beginning. And we see that in John 3, 7, and we see that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Number two, it says that, 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 that the lamb was to be hidden for four days. So God commanded Israel to pick out this, this, this lamb and um, to set it apart on the 10th day. But on the 14th day, it said that the lamb uh, was due to be slaughtered. And what is the fulfillment of that? <clears throat> Well, during the week of the crucifixion, Yeshua entered Jerusalem on the 10th day and was slain on the 14th day. He was the sacrificial lamb. We see that in Matthew 21, 1 to 11, which is the triumphal entry of Yeshua into Jerusalem. And we also see that in Matthew 27, 27 to 31, which is the scripture that um, talks about Yeshua being crucified. Number three, it said that the lamb was to be a lamb of the first uh, year, meaning that um, Israel was instructed to set apart this lamb that was um, a lamb that was the, the very first lamb born to the female uh, sh uh, sheep. And this firstborn uh, was always uh, set aside and given to the Lord in the Hebrew um, custom. The fulfillment was that Yeshua was born um, uh, of Mary, and he was uh, the, her very first child, and that he was the firstborn son of God. Uh, we see that in uh, Matthew 1, 18 uh, to 25. I'll read the, the last verse of that. And it said that Mary had brought forth her firstborn son, and, and he, uh, she called his name Yeshua. Uh, number four, it was to be a male lamb and not a female lamb, okay? Um, and the fulfillment of that is this. Is it says that um, in Scripture that by one man, man Adam, um, sin entered the world. And, 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 and as a result of that, uh, death entered. <clears throat> but it also says that in Scripture, by one man who was Yeshua, that sin and death were conquered. And we see that in Romans 5.12 and uh, Romans 5.17. Number five, the lamb was to be without uh, spot or blemish. Uh, the Is Israelites were to pick out a lamb that was, that was perfect in every way, way, and they had to make sure that there was no spot or no, no blemish on the lamb. And what was the fulfillment of that? Um, all who inspected the lamb of God, Yeshua, um, on the day that he was crucified, no one could find fault with him. I mean, they brought witnesses, but the witnesses lied. Um, they uh, brought witnesses that couldn't couldn't um, uh, come up with the same story. Um, when they brought up uh, Yeshua be, uh, um, in front of Pilate, Pilate says, I, I find nothing wrong with this man, and he wanted to release him. When they brought uh, Yeshua before Herod, um, Herod, Herod uh, basically listened to, uh, or actually Yeshua didn't speak a word to Herod, um, but he listened to the uh, Jewish people um, placing their accusations against Yeshua, and yet he could find no fault in Yeshua, and he sent him back to Pilate. Uh, we see that Judas uh, um, eventually took the 30 pieces of silver back to the, um, uh, the uh, Pharisees and said, I, I've betrayed an innocent man. Um, and the centurion um, said, you know, when Yeshua was hanging on the cross, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. So Yeshua truly was um, the Lamb of God without spot or blemish. Um, number six, uh, they were to kill the lamb in the evening. Um, the lamb was to be killed on the evening of the 14th day of Nisan. The fulfillment of that is that Jesus was slain between the two evenings. So the hour of crucifixion we see in scriptures was um, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., which actually falls between two evenings. And you, Yeshua was crucified on the Passover. He was the Passover lamb. We see that in Matthew 27, uh, verses 46 to 47. Um, number seven, it says that the whole assembly was to kill the lamb. Uh, so the whole congregation of, of Israel were, was together, uh, together, and they were involved in the, in the slaughter of this uh, Passover lamb. 
And the fulfillment was that the Sanhedrin and uh, the priest and the people all stood um, and accused Yeshua um, before he was crucified. And so we see that Yeshua was the Lamb of God for everyone. And we see that in Matthew 27, verses 20 to 22. Number eight, it says that the blood of the lamb um, was to be applied to the lintel and to the doorpost. So in other words, the blood was supposed to be at the top of the door and on the sides of the door um, in order to deliver them from the death angel. And what's the fulfillment? The fulfillment is through the shed blood of Yeshua, we enter into a new covenant whereby we have been delivered from eternal death. And we see that in Matthew 26, verses 27 to 29. Number nine, uh, the body of the lamb was to be eaten. Um, so the roasted lamb was to be eaten in the same night um, with the unleavened bread and the bitter herbs, herbs it said in scripture. And what is the fulfillment? Um, Yeshua suffered and died the same night. Uh, so the unleavened bread meant that Yeshua was without sin. The bitter herbs were the bitter suffering that he suffered on the cross for you and, and for I. And we see that in Matthew 27 uh, verses 1 to 2. Number 10, how was the lamb to be eaten? The lamb was to be eaten with, it says in scripture, with their lo loins girded, uh, with shoes on their feet, with the staff in their hands, and, and they were ready in haste. And what was the fulfillment of that? Well, as believers, it says in scripture that we are to gird our loins with a belt of tr truth. We are to have our feet shod and ready with the gospel of peace. And we are to have that sword of the spirit in our hands. And we see that in um, Ephesians 6 verses 13 uh, through 18. Number 11, it says that the lamb uh, was, uh, the Passover was to happen at the going down of the sun. Um, so the Lord's uh, instructions concerning the Passover feast was that it was to occur just at that specific time. And what was the fulfillment? Well, when Jesus, Yeshua, died on the cross, it says that the sun was darkened from midday uh, for three hours. So from noon until three o'clock. The, the, it, the sun was darkened. And we see that in Matthew 27, 45. Uh, number 12, it says that not a bone was to be broken on the Passover lamb. So in eating the Passover lamb, Yahweh commanded that no bones were to be broken in that Passover lamb. And what is the fulfillment? The fulfillment of that is that it was the custom of the Roman soldiers to break the legs of those who were being crucified to speed up the death process. Um, and But by the time they had reached a Yeshua, Yeshua had already died, so they did not need to break his legs in order to speed up that, that the death. Um, and we see that in John 19, verse 33. Number 13, it said that they all must be circumcised in order to be uh, partakers of the Passover. So no stranger or no foreigner was, or, or anyone that was uncircumcised, were, um, they were not permitted to partake of this Passover uh, feast. And so what is the fulfillment of that? Um, in the New Testament, it shows us that, that we, when we are under the new covenant and we have a relationship with, with Yeshua, that we may partake of the Lord's Supper. But it also says in scripture that those who do not um, know Yeshua as Lord and Savior, that they are not to partake of the Lord's Supper. Um, and that is the reason that uh, they, were, they were not discerning it correctly. And that is why people were actually dying. And we see that in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 22 to 31. Number 14, that there, it says that there was healing power in the Lamb. When the children of Israel feasted on the body of the slain and roasted Lamb, 
it said that there was none feeble among them when they made their exodus out of Egypt. We see that in Psalm 105, 37. I'm going to read that. He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among the tribes. And what was the fulfillment of that? Well, those who are born again, we have physical, emotional, and spiritual healing through the shed blood of Yeshua. Now, these scriptures I'm going to read, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, says, Surely he, meaning Yeshua, has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, it says, we are healed. Then in 1 Peter 2.24, it says this, who himself bore our sins in his body on a tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. So you see, in this scripture, it's past tense, because we're, we're already past the cross in um, uh, 1 Peter 2.24. So by his stripes, we're already healed. Psalm 103, 2 and 5, uh, 103 verses 2 to 5 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your, new, your youth is renewed like eagles. Okay, so number 15. Uh, the Passover was to be a memorial. Okay, so it was to be an ordinance that was to be kept every year by the people of Israel and throughout all generations. And what was the fulfillment? The fulfillment was that Yeshua instituted the ordinance of the Lord's Supper on the night of the Passover feast. Okay, you see the Passover was never done away with. The church has been instructed by Yeshua. He says, do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> so I want to read to you Luke twenty-two fourteen to 20. When the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to, to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, and, and it is shed for you. We also see um, in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, um, Paul talks about, um, about how Yeshua said that as often as we drink this cup and, 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 um, and eat the bread, we are doing it in remembrance of him until he comes again. So every time we celebrate communion, we are remembering what Yeshua did at the cross and, we're, we, and we do that until he comes again. So on the feast of Passover, we need to remember that Yeshua's suffering um, that he did for us on the cross, we need to remember that um, on the Passover, and we also need to celebrate his resurrection. Some of you may be saying, yes, but that's what we do at Easter, and, and that's what we do on Good Friday. On Good Friday, we remember that Yeshua was uh, crucified on the cross, and on Easter Sunday, we, re we remember that he rose from the dead. Um, so your question may be, why should we do this um, on Passover? Well, the answer is that the true date of Yeshua's death is the 14th of Nisan on the Jewish calendar. And the true date of his resurrection is three days after the 14th of Nisan. You see, in the summer of, of 325 A.D., the Council of Nicaea changed the Passover from the 14th of Nisan 
to the Sunday following the first full moon after the vernal equinox, and then they called it Easter. You see, they had no authority to change um, what Yeshua uh, set forth in, in Holy Scriptures uh, when he said, um, do this in remembrance of me, because he did it on the Passover. Historical records from the Catholic Church prove that they chose to exercise their own authority in changing and severing the connection to Passover. You see, there was a long-term um, agenda in Rome uh, to shift and undermine all the ties to the Jewish uh, people at that time. You see, in Scripture, Yeshua celebrated the Passover, and he instructed us to do the same thing. Paul and the early church never celebrated Easter. They celebrated the Passover, but with a new understanding that Yeshua was the Passover lamb. So Passover in 2016 uh, begins at uh, sundown on April 22nd, and it goes to sundown April 30th. It's eight days, eight full days. And another interesting fact is that the Passover of 2016 will be the 1,690th Passover that has not been honored by the church since the Council of Nicaea. And, and this Council of Nicaea was the first ecumenical movement to establish a one world religion. So if you truly want to celebrate the Passover, I want to, then I want to share with you some of the ways that my husband and I are going to celebrate the Passover this year. Um, first of all, we are going to read all the scriptures that I mentioned at the very beginning uh, to review uh, the Passover in the Old Testament, which were Exodus 12, 1 to 30, Leviticus 23, 4 to 5, Numbers 33, 3, Deuteronomy 16, 1 and 8. We're also going to uh, read Psalm 22. It's a beautiful prophetic psalm that David wrote uh, when he was um, hiding from Saul in the cave. But it was actually, when he wrote it, he, it was actually a, a prophecy of the, the suffering of Yeshua on the cross. It's a very beautiful psalm. We are also going to read um, in Luke 22, uh, 14 to 20, which I read to you, and we will read 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. Um, after we review these, these uh, scriptures and just truly remember what Yeshua has done for us, we're going to celebrate communion. Now, some of you may be saying, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, I thought only a priest or a pastor could celebrate communion. Well, that's, that's an incorrect uh, teaching. Uh, if you are a born-again Christian, you have the ability to just uh, celebrate communion. All you need to do is just get some um, unleavened crackers. Uh, we buy them, uh, the Hebrew uh, crackers at uh, Walmart, and we get um, grape juice. We don't use wine. We don't, uh, we don't uh, do anything with alcohol in our household. And we, we get the grape juice and the unleavened um, Hebrew crackers. And we celebrate uh, communion just like Yeshua did. We break the bread, we partake of the bread, and we drink uh, the uh, grape juice, which represents the fruit of the vine. And you can do the same thing in your homes. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to have a priest to, to consecrate anything. Because you see, um, communion, celebrating communion, is all about remembering what Yeshua did for you at the cross. But it's also celebrating what he did in the, in the resurrection. So, um, oh, and, and the other thing that we will do um, on the very first day of the Passover, the first full day, which is the 23rd, we will make it a day of rest. Um, and so we won't do any work on that day because we want to honor Yeshua. Um, these are just some of the ways that we will celebrate um, uh, the Passover. And another suggestion is if you have the opportunity to go to a Messianic uh, Seder dinner, uh, you'll be absolutely blessed um, to um, attend if you can. So I invite you this year, 2016, uh, to uh, celebrate the Passover, to honor Yeshua, your Savior.